<laughs> Today we have with us General Paul Valley, and it's such an honor to have you, sir. Um, we have you because we, I've I noticed the Middle East Media Research Institute uh, caught a March 27th article that stated China and Iran signed an economic security cooperation agreement, according to which Beijing is going to invest 400 billion in Iran over the next 25 years. Did this surprise you, General Valley? No, not at all. I mean, it's part of that Silk Road initiative of going from across to Asia into the Middle East and up. But you have to understand, China has been working along with North Korea, with Iran for 10 years now on their nuclear development program. Every time North Korea would shoot a missile and China allowed them and wanted them to do it to take the heat off of China, they would always have Iranian uh, uh delegates there and vice versa when they shot any missiles in iran there were always a chinese delegation of scientists and uh, military uh, uh weapons experts so this has been going on a while now they're going to continue to see what they can do to exercise their power throughout the middle east based out of iran perhaps putting as many as five thousand soldiers in there i yeah, that's that's just kind of mind blowing. That was the next question. Um, you know, these five thousand Chinese soldiers that they're talking about, Pakistan right. is talking about it and saying it's going to benefit even them financially. Um, does this change the balance of power in the world? Oh, absolutely, it does. And uh, of course, China uh, has invested several billion dollars in Pakistan over the last uh, five years. Uh, to have a road going from West China, if you can picture it, down through Pakistan and give them a seaport on the Indian Ocean. China's never had that. So this is how brilliant they are. In addition to that, they've created two additional ports on the, uh, uh, in the South, uh, well, uh, in the Indian Ocean there, uh, as well as uh, two major airports. So uh, the workers that have come in uh, to Pakistan have been by the thousands. Now, as they move forward, uh, across the uh, the Middle East, they will then have a new centric power base uh, in Iran. This is their plan, as I understand it. Uh, General Valley, Leo Homan here. Thanks for being on the podcast with us. Um, do you see uh, this as a real threat uh, as far as Chinese troops also being in Canada? We've read a lot about that recently, about Chinese right. troops training up there uh, uh, just over the northern border. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, that is true. They've had joint uh, command post exercises with the Chinese, the PRC, uh, as far back. I, the last, one of the, the first ones I saw was about uh, five years ago, and they continue to have liaisons. But see, on the other hand, the United States is liaison uh, through 16 nations in the Far East. And we have sent delegations ourselves militarily. When I was deputy commander of the Pacific, uh, the U.S. Army Pacific, we sent contingent liaison people to the PRC uh, to engage in some uh, uh, security operations type stuff. So this has been going on for years, but now the PRC, controlled by the Chinese Communist Party, is on a major offensive through the South China Sea, through Pakistan. So, and they knew they have to have seaports and they have to have airfields mm. to expand and extend their power. They're, they're absolutely brilliant on, on strategy and deception. Do you see uh, there being a threat over the next two, three, four years of a Chinese incursion into Taiwan or, or Philippines or any other Pacific Island nation? Well, ever since Chiang Kai-shek uh, uh, moved off the mainland of Taiwan many decades ago, uh, even under Mao Zedong, it's always been we want a one China approach, which would include mm -hmm. Taiwan. But uh, when they moved the uh, the, the government uh, off of uh, the mainland to Taiwan, headed by Chiang Kai-shek, uh, they then developed one of the most prosperous nations in the world. And by mm -hmm. the way, that Taiwan has an excellent armed force, and we've supported them, even though we have an out front, uh, you know obliged ourselves to the two country uh, system. And uh, we haven't been very strong in that. Uh, President Trump was, but the other presidents have not been. 
So what happened in the dominoes that the Chinese Communist Party play, they took down Hong Kong, basically took it over, right? Right. Uh, and disregarding the proposals and the, and the acceptance when, when the British left. So we knew the next domino would be Taiwan, bring Taiwan into the fold of the one China system. Uh -huh. And they've been conducting operations by sea and air, uh, threats against Taiwan. But the, the Chinese have to remember, and I think they do, the Japanese have one of the finest armed forces now. Mm -hmm. The South Koreans have one of the finest armed forces. Then you've got India countering. You have to even, you even have the Vietnamese who do not like the Chinese, by the way. China has no friends other than North Korea. Huh. And they know that. And we have two of our fleets out there, uh, and our aircraft carrier fleets, eight to 12 ships. One aircraft carrier group that we have has more firepower than 80% of the countries of the world. Wow. One aircraft carrier group with nuclear and non-nuclear weapon capabilities on board. But that doesn't mean we're not vulnerable because the advancement of the Chinese Navy and the Chinese Air Force has been tremendous over the last five years. Uh -huh. They have stolen so much technology from our Defense Department and the design of weapon systems, engine systems, turbines, uh, reconnaissance. Uh, it's been amazing. And, and again, the Chinese are so brilliant because they don't have to pay for that research and development. Right. <laughs> Excuse me, it's a lot easier for them to, to steal it, take it, and then uh, develop it uh, from, the, from their uh, base operations point of view, their factories and so on. It's absolutely brilliant. Now, of course, the next uh, area is the sky is the space. Uh -huh. And so we formed Space Command, uh, of course, under uh, uh, President Trump. Uh, but now the Chinese are working on uh, uh, weaponizing satellites. Uh -huh. So they can send a satellite up, and then that satellite can release uh, two or three nuclear uh, electromagnetic pulse nuclear bombs uh, over any city or over any location. So this is the future that we have to look at. We also have to counter it. But I'm not convinced that our state or our, our weapon, well, I should say our admirals and generals are focusing on the right thing today. They become so politicized at the three and four star level that they're more about, we're more about the woke movement. Yes. And uh, critical theory, race theory, uh, the training of our troops, which then takes away from the readiness. So uh, I understand things are not going well in the lower ranks, though. They're really upset about uh, the approach these generals and admirals are taking in supporting Biden and the Obama-based type of uh, policies. Well, they're, they're basically carrying out a purge or trying to, aren't they? That's correct. And remember, Obama did it. 120 senior officers uh, yes. he purged out of the system. And so he got in even at the lower ranks than at the major lieutenant colonel. Uh, they were Obamanized, as I would call it. Now, some of them have reached the point of being brigadiers and major generals, for example, and now four stars. And General Gordon Austin, who is the new Secretary of Defense, he's a woke guy. He's the one that ordered to stand down for 60 days to purge the system. Right. Not what they call right-wing extremists or so on, which is such a farce. It really is, and such a shame. So, so should we have confidence that our government under this new regime is going to counter this threat, uh, this Chinese threat? Or, and if not, you know, what should Americans be doing? Uh, should we expect a war, a, a major war to break out under this, this new regime because they're not showing the strength that the previous uh, presidency showed? And, and the Chinese, they, they only respect strength, right? They only respect strength. They see weakness in our leadership, weakness in our government, and they are, are on all fronts, economic, financial, banking, military, expansionist uh, policies as far as uh, trade and uh, uh, again like projecting 5,000 troops in, into Iran. Uh, this this really uh, sets a whole new pattern out there. But they know Joe Biden's compromised. Right. Hunter Biden's compromised. They're all compromised by the Chinese Communist Party, even Mitch McConnell's wife, Feinstein, I mean uh, Pelosi. The Chinese have us under their thumb right now, and I don't see any strength in our country 
unless somebody takes control and removes this regime that we have in Washington? Well, I mean, that begs the question, if the regime is this weak, uh, do you expect the Chinese to, um, to make a move, to make a yeah. strategic move? Yeah, and, I, I don't think they want to go to all out war against the United States. I, I don't see that happening. Okay. I do see them taking down Taiwan. Uh, I do see them affecting more expansionist powers in the South China Sea, Indian Ocean, uh, uh, even impacting uh, uh, throughout the Middle East with Iran sort of as a base. Uh, and now they get into a situation though where they're countering Turkey, who was a big controlling dominant factor country in the Middle East, and countering Russia, which is very influential in the Middle East, particularly in the in the Syrian area. Uh, but you have Hezbollah now with great control in Lebanon, exercising even a, a more control in Syria. But the Israelis are watching everything they do. The Israelis will take out a target within 24 hours if they see it as a threat. And they've taken out many of the targets that Iran has put inside Syria and bases, missile development, uh, different warehousing, and so on. So the fortunately, the Israelis are watching that very clearly, and the Saudis are watching it very closely. 